Hi everyone. Praise God. We are here, ready to pray. Pinpoint Prayer Team. I'm Nina Boyd. And I'm Gregory. And we are here to pray. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, <laughs> <laughs> when you... Um... I was giving her a chance to talk a second. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, darling. <laughs> uh, you know, when you are going through something and uh, you don't see the road out, you don't see any light at the end of the tunnel, uh, what you've got to do is begin to talk faith. Do you know how to do that? You know how we gossip and how we talk about stuff that, you know, what Kim Kardashian was wearing and all this nonsense? You need to talk faith. And I guarantee you, when you start to talk faith, then your spirit man is going to sit up and take a, a take. It's going to sit up and stand to attention. And he's going to start to listen to the words that you're saying. And then your words are going to begin to minister to yourself. And that's what I really think Ephesians 5, I think it's 18 through 23, uh, means by to encourage yourself in the Lord. I, that's, I don't think that's the first part. But it says singing psalms and hymns and making melody in your heart unto the Lord. You begin to speak faith. Begin to speak faith. And you start to listen to your own words and it starts to edify you and your spirit man stands up and then you begin to feel like you're more than a conqueror amen. that you're an overcomer that you're going over and not under amen amen and so <clears throat> why am i saying that well i had to do that myself today and i felt so much better after i preached to myself <laughs> and it reminded me of years ago when I was uh, single and I worked for this company and, you know, you know, was going through some ups and downs and would have a bad day. And, you know, that was back when we used answering machines, you know. So I would call myself on my answering machine and preach to myself on the answering machine. And then when I got home at the end of the day, I would listen to those words over and over and over again, telling me, prophesying to myself, preaching to myself. And it used to encourage me so much. So I praise God for those early lessons in my walk with God because he shows me how to pull myself out of a rut. He shows me how to walk out of things, a bad situation, and, and to fall into a bucket of you-know-what and come out smelling like a rose. He shows me how to do that. He shows me how he's going to fight my battle. And your attitude, yes, I know we say we're not supposed to be moved by our feelings, but honey, let me tell you something. Your attitude has everything to do with your perspective in a thing and how you fight. To be strong in the Lord means just that, to use the weapons of God. You're not fighting flesh and blood. The weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Come on, somebody, to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. So praise God Amen. that we have the word to stand on. And we know who we are in Christ and that that vision, that, that picture that we want to see of who we really are in him is becoming clearer and clearer every day. Amen. 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 That was good. So I'm, praise God. I need to hear that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I'm starting out. I was thinking that maybe I should have her do a little talk teaching just to encourage you before we teach. And then we pray. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, um, <clears throat> I guess today I'm going to still talking about praying in tongues because that's a big subject. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that's why there's so much confusion in the body of Christ is because of the, nobody understands the value of it, of praying in tongues. Because they you got people praying in tongues out loud in church and there's no interpreter. And, and you got people praying out loud in front of unlearned people. And that's a problem. Well, some people say, well, I pray in tongues, and they'll probably want it. It does. It Maybe necessarily won't work that way. They might think something's wrong with you because they don't understand. That's just like a person come to you and start speaking another language to you, and you don't know the language. And you're just wondering why they're doing that, and they're just speaking, and that, they, they don't care. But it, it's, it's not right. So it's like I, I would come from another angle, and I'm, I, I, I'm trying to figure the best way to teach you how to yield, basically, to, re to receive the Holy Spirit, you have to yield. You have to basically 
yield. I don't know how to explain yield, but do you have a definition of yield? Well, uh, to yield, you know, simply means to willingly submit, you know, to me. Mm -hmm. um, there's no magic trick. There is no uh, formula that you have to say. Mm -hmm. It's a gift that's freely given to all of us as believers. And, uh, you know, just going back to my own experience of when I was got spirit field years ago, uh, I didn't really understand anything about it. <clears throat> Excuse me, and when it came on me, you know, that, that stammering lips that the old old women called it, uh, I felt an unction to say something, but my brain was going, what in the world are you going to say? <laughs> you know, so uh, when that language began to come, and it did, it kind of tied up my mouth a little bit, and I, I remember the lady telling me, just relax. She said, she put her hand here, and she said, just relax. Relax your mouth and just let it come out. And when I did that, it just rolled right out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. And uh, But it still was, you know, like I said, it was eight years before I really received any real teaching on what that was for and how that I could use that to go towards my calling in God on purpose just because I made up my mind to. I mean, it's like you have to yield your faith. You have to submit yourself to it. In other words, when I tell people this, all the time. Sometimes when when we pray for people, my wife and I, they feel the anointing, and that's when they feel the stammering lip. They feel like they want to say something else, but then they fight it because they don't understand it. They they don't. I don't. I don't want to sound stupid. It's not a matter of you sounding stupid or not. It's a matter of you yielding over to it. And then sometimes we pray for people, and they don't feel anything. Mm -hmm. Then I get the I. I tell them to say hallelujah, 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 and tell your tongue get twisted. It sounds like you're teaching me how to pray in tongues. No, I'm teaching you how to yield to it. Mm -hmm. And once you yield to it, you can pray in tongues anytime you want to. I used to think that I could not pray in tongues until the anointing came. And then, But I realize now that Paul said, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than you all. So what was he saying? That means he wasn't waiting on the anointing. He was yielding to it. It's a gift. You can use it as much as you want to, and it can take you as far into God that you can possibly dream. In other words, how does it take you far in, into God? The abundance of revelations that you will receive as a result of praying in tongues. Abundance of revelation is you just understand things. You understand not only your life. You not only understand the word of God. How does it dictate to me? You understand all types of things. And that will take you into another awareness of God, another realm in God. Because he can trust you because you begin to understand how he operates as a result of praying in tongues. Well, can you get that by, I like that other voice I do use. Can you get that just by speaking the word? See, you have to understand something. Well, I can use confession to get to another realm. Oh, I can use worship and get to another realm. Every one of those gift. uh I don't want to call them gifts, but every one of those positional truths, it will take you somewhere, but they all are different. Worship mm -hmm. will give you more of his presence, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, confessing of the word will help develop your authority. Uh, speaking, uh, uh, what is it, worship, uh, uh, fasting is a positional truth. I call them positional truth. Fasting, what it does is it causes you to, uh, to deal with things in your, in other words, if you're a person that don't that believe in getting people saved, but you don't believe in healing, you don't believe in this, you don't believe in that, but I do believe in fasting. What's going to happen is fasting will cause the, the, your flesh to drop all the way down. In other words, the way you believe, the what's really in your heart to come to the surface, that's position of truth. And that area where you believe will come to the surface, will rise up in you, and you'll start getting people saved everywhere. Because it would break, if you believe in healing, you fast a lot. Eventually, your flesh will go down. I, those way of thinking, that law, uh, false thinking will go down and the, the truth will rise up and you'll start getting people healed everywhere. You'll start learning how to yield, uh, get out the way and let the Holy Spirit work through you. Because fasting helps bring the, the real truth to the surface. But I thought fasting moves God. No, fasting never moves God. Fasting moves you into a position to receive from God. Yes. 
In other words, he's, you're going to get what he's already giving you. So when you start fasting and you start praying in tongues, you start you started rising up. And that 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 this wall that represents your life where you're walking at right now, where he you keep on fasting and keep on praying, you'll break that wall and you'll go into another place in God. But we're not talking about fasting. We talk, we're not talking about worship right now. We're not talking about speaking his word right now. We're talking about praying in tongues. Yes. I wanted the keys. I wanted my wife to read something real quick. Okay, this is again from the Amplified. Yeah. This is second. second. I, I personally like uh, King James Version, but I'm going this route. <laughs> I okay, love you, honey. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> this is 2 Corinthians 12 7. And it says, To keep me from being puffed up and too much elated by the exceeding greatness, preeminence of these revelations, there was given me a thorn. A splinter in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to rack and buffet and harass me, oh. to keep me from okay. from bring, from being excessively exalted. I mean, man, the King uh, Amplified it break, breaks it down, breaks it all it? the way down. I just love the King James. It tells you basically, Paul was <laughs> a walking one man army during that time. Mm -hmm. He had abundance of revelations he understood a lot of things i think he basically he understood more things but he didn't put everything down in the word of god he only put what god wanted him to put down he wrote uh two-thirds of the new testament of the, he wrote the epistles because of the praying in tongues and they i love the way sign uh the scientists of people theologists say the big up high up whatever you want to call them they say well theologians theologians yes they say well, the reason why Paul had an eye disease, and he, that's why he, he had a thorn in his flesh, and this and that. Paul did not have no eye disease. He wasn't sick in his body. What that have to do with anything? That's because he had the thorn in his flesh. That don't thorn. That, that was the. That was it. That was the way they talked during that time. Oh, have mercy. But the thorn in the flesh that he was talking about was everywhere that Paul went to preach. Mm -hmm. Satan was right there, uh, trying to stop. He said to wreck and buffet and harass me to keep me from from being excessively exalted. That's it. But see, the devil was there constantly trying to stop Paul, and Paul was constantly going. He was he was uh, he was in a, in the deep. Was it twice? Mm -hmm. I mean, when he says in the deep, he's treading on water and I'll pull a night and a day and treading on water, look praying and believing God and, and the sharks and everything mm -hmm. out no there. No hope in sight. And he's saying, Lord, I I thank you. Because I, I know you because of the abundance of revelations that I know you're not going to leave me in this water. And I mean, he had people following behind him trying to stop him. I'm not, I'm saying all that is to explain to you that praying in tongues, get, well, you sound like you're saying that the more revelation we get, we're going to get attacked too. Well, you, you are. Yes, you are. are but you're going to get attacked anyway. Mm -hmm. So basically, I'm trying to get you, get you prepared for if you want anything in this life, you're going to be attacked. So don't don't say, I don't want to pray in tongues because I don't want all that revelation so the devil can come and attack me. No, you you need this. Just by you listening to this broadcast, he's going to start to try to stop you. Mm -hmm. so, and if you're going to do anything for God, the enemy is going to fight you. Mm -hmm. Tooth and toenail. Tooth and toenail. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read some more. Okay, from there. Yeah, I like her. Three times I called upon the Lord and besought him about this. And beg that it might depart from me. But he said to me, come on, doesn't it sound like God? My grace, my favor, and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you. And it says in, print, in brackets, sufficient against any danger and enables you to hear the power. Wait a minute. To hear the trouble manfully. Oh, Sufficient against any danger and enables you to hear the trouble manfully. For my strength and power are made perfect, fulfilled and completed, and show themselves most effective in your weakness. Therefore, I will, at, I will all the more gladly glory in my weaknesses and infirmities that the strength and power of Christ, the Messiah, may rest Yes, may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. Woo, so, I like that. When Paul wrote that, this letter, that's what they were then, before it was the word of God, it was letters. He was, he was in prison. 
and they would let him out for an hour a day, and he would because he was a uh, God, it was my brain that because he was a Jew, mm. he would write. They would let him write, so he wrote this letter to encourage Timothy or whatever to encourage him. In other words, what he was what he what he was saying was all these attacks that has been come, and it was so bad and so, and he got his foot broken twice and why do you think Luke followed him everywhere because Luke was a doctor one of the mm -hmm. disciples he was a doctor so he would doctor on him they, stoned and left for dead I, I mean if you would look at Paul because of the abundance of revelation he had scars probably all over himself mm -hmm. but the, I am so sorry we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and go again and everything like that I'm not gone it just I forgot to reboot my system before I got on now let me get back to where I was at I'm back. We're back. The the abundance of revelation that Paul had. Paul was attacked everywhere he went. The the revelation he asked God three times to stop these attacks against me. And he finally understood what the Lord was trying to speak to Paul through the Holy Spirit. He said, My grace is sufficient for you. What he was basically saying was, Everything you're asking me for, I already done it through my son Jesus. So Everything that you're asking me to do, I already done it. I want you to believe it. And I want you to keep on moving, going forward. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. I've already done it. So I want you to believe it. Paul began to get moved by what he was feeling because of the attacks. But because he'd been spending that time praying in tongues a lot and the abundance of revelation, he was able to understand what God was trying to explain to him, that my grace has already been there for you because of Jesus. He had made a way for his father to become his uh, his father to become Paul's father. So now you have everything. You have all the riches on the, in, in heaven because of of my son Jesus. So lean on me and you get your glory in me. Yes. I mean, I just put it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. But what I wanted to explain to you is that the abundance of revelations he got because of praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. That's why the devil was, came personally to try to stop Paul, uh, to, to, to stop his ministry because he was making, he was like a, he was like a one man army mm -hmm. because of praying in tongues. One thing you're going to learn when you start praying in tongues, if you haven't learned it already, when you start praying an hour a day in tongues uh, and begin to get, uh, the Lord begins to download revelation knowledge to you, understanding of certain things like you are becoming a lot, you're going to be a walking library. I mean, because he'll, be he'll start dropping all this information into you to help you better your life. That when you try to go back to your old church that you went to, the first thing you're going to say is the same thing that we said. Something's wrong here. The pastor's not preaching the way he used to preach. Mm -hmm. But but it's what, what the problem is, is, nothing's wrong with your pastor. Your pastor has always been preaching that way. But something has happened to you. You have changed. And because you changed and everything, you, you see things differently. And you see him jump up and down over some of the things <coughs> that, he, that he said that he says. And you say to yourself, why is they jumping up and down? I remember I jumped up and down. But you, because of the revelation that you're now receiving, you're different. I mean, you're probably going to do like I did. I, I was judgmental. I hate to say it because I was like, what's wrong with him? He, he should know what I know. This, this. But now I understand more and I, I walk in the love of God because he can't help where he's at. He can help it, but he doesn't. Do the things that you do. He's not praying in tongues or, or whatever, and he doesn't have the revelation knowledge to take the church to another level. You have been doing that, and you're getting more understanding of things. And now, when you go places, you hear things, and you know it's not what that person might be saying may not be scripture or whatever. And and everybody's jumping up and down because it sounds good. I remember one time I went to this one church, and I'm just oh. the pastor. All he said was. Um, no, tell them about what happened. Don't say where it was at. You remember when you said the pastor said the, the DNA and all that? Oh, yes. Uh, can I say where it was at? No. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, he went into like an hour and a half of preaching. And, you know, with a lot of emotionalism and everything like that. And um, See, pastor. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. He went to, he had a lot of emotionalism, you know, with a lot of, 
you know, just emotionalism as he was preaching. You know, he had to, he had to put emphasis on every word. And the whole bottom line that you came away with what he said was that when Jesus spit, spat into the mud and put it on the blind man's eyes, that his DNA went into the man. That Jesus' DNA went into the man. And I sat there like, okay. But the place went wild. Yes, they did. But they danced and sang and hollered, screamed and shouted. And I was like, wow. Okay. Now, the reason the person's eyes were healed, because the anointing God, Jesus, it wasn't because of Jesus. It was because he was being obedient to the Holy Spirit. And he spat on the ground because the Holy Spirit told him to do that. Mm -hmm. Remember, Jesus did not come down here in his glory that he has now. He came down here as a mere man filled with the Holy Spirit and he was doing, he was able to do the things that he did because he was learned, he learned how to he learned. I thought he knew. No, he learned. Mm -hmm. Just like we have to learn. He became an example for us. So that means he was able to do the things he did because he followed the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's why the miracles that he had was because he was obedient to the Holy Spirit. That's, that's why he said the greater works that we shall do. Mm -hmm. Because we're gonna, he became an example for us. And that means the greater works that we're going to be doing is getting people born again. All that's of right. us. That's right. So hallelujah. I'm, not getting, I'm getting too much into doctrine. I don't want to lose anybody because they may not believe that way. But I really pray that you guys, while you're on this broadcast, is have an open mind. Mm -hmm. You have an open mind and you pray about the things that you hear on here. And then the, and the, I'm trusting the Holy Spirit will begin to give it to you, the understanding of what we're teaching them. We're not teaching false doctrine. We're not saying Jesus is not powerful and almighty. But I'm trying to get him to get you to understand that he operates, that we operate. He had the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. We pray in tongues because that's the way the system is set up. That he said, I'm going to leave you a, a comforter. And that comforter is the same comforter that he had. And he's going to lead and guide you into all truth. Yeah. You know, and why? what is Jesus Christ calling on your life? What are you supposed to be doing? What is the hope of Jesus Christ calling in your life? As Christians, we are supposed to be enabled to use every tool that has been given to us to walk this walk out and to find out what the Holy Spirit is saying and how he wants to develop the gifts that God has given us. And it's for people out there that don't know God. It's yeah. for people who need prayer. It's for people who need uh, encouragement. It's for whatever it is. If you have something that somebody needs, the Holy Spirit needs to be able to get that over to you so you he can use you. Yeah, and he wants to use all of us. Yes, he does. I mean, a lot of you all saying, well, I want God to use me. I want God to use me. And you start praying an hour or 30 minutes a day in tongues. And what's going to happen, he's going to, once the power begins to surface in your life, he will use you to pieces. Mm -hmm. You'll be saying, Lord, I'm stop. I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I do want to say this. Uh, the young man that we've been praying for, his name is Elijah. Uh, he was in a car accident a couple of days ago, and uh, he had swelling on the brain. Uh, the doctors were, at first, were expecting him to die. Well, we just got news that he's uh, he slept really good last night when we prayed, all of us prayed, and uh, and it seems like he's 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 doing a whole lot better. They talking about they're going to keep him in an induced coma for at least another week to give his body a chance to heal because he was trying to wake up at first yesterday, but now they they're going to put him in an induced coma just for a week so they can continue to stop the infection in his lungs. We already know he's going to come out of this whole thing with the right mind and everything because Amen. the church is praying. Amen. Amen. And that's one thing about when you start getting revelation knowledge from praying in tongues, you begin to pray. When you pray, you can pray the same prayer just like anybody else because you understand how God works in your life. Your prayers will be more effective than a person who doesn't pray like you do. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started um, praying and everything like that. Uh, how you doing, McGee? I forget where he's from. Miguel. Miguel, I'm sorry. McGee. <laughs> he's like, what? My first time coming on here, and you're going to mess my name up. <laughs> Hallelujah, G. He's from Portugal, I think. Portugal. Okay, Portugal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. All right, we're going we're gonna to pray for uh, Baltimore. We're going to pray for Chicago. We're going to pray for Haiti. And we're going to pray for Ukraine, Detroit, and Japan. We're gonna we're gonna try to fly through all of these places, but at the same time we're gonna continue to use our faith. 
For the ones who do pray in tongues, I would love for you to pray in tongues now. Start now, but just pray quietly so you can hear us while we pray so you can have something to be in agreement with. Amen. Because if you're not in agreement with what we're doing, it's like you're praying to edify yourself. I want you to pray and saturate the atmosphere and be in agreement. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. It's really not, you know, complicated. Just, I know. We just make it complicated. Yes, we do. That's why I'm explaining to you guys, praying in tongues, yield to it. The problem with people is that they don't understand or they don't yield. Because mm -hmm. when, when you, I, I, I pray for people all the time. I say, be filled with the Spirit. I pray right now. Father, fill them right now. I let them know what I'm going to say to them. And once that happens, they all do the same thing. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm waiting on him to feel me. I said, you have to speak. What am I saying? That just go ahead. Oh, sabar rabbi si kerimo kurama si kerimo. You sound like a rabbi monk or something. <laughs> no, that's just the way he uses me. Yield to it. I'm gonna do this more, and I'm I'm just trying to take my time with this, so I won't lose a lot of you all. Because the ones that don't understand praying in tongues, it's the best way to pray. Okay, gotta pray. We gotta pray here. Okay, you want to start off, honey? Baltimore. <clears throat> yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And we thank you, Lord God. And we speak it to be so that everything that we've prayed in regards to Baltimore is done in Jesus' name. It's in that place called done. But we continue to saturate that place with our prayers, Father God. And we thank you, Father, that... Uh, the angels are there bringing in everything that we are commanding to come into that city. Right now, we command the the uh, unemployment rate to rise. We command there to be funds available for programs for impoverished areas. We speak it to be so that the churches are, are being uh, strengthened and refreshed and encouraged to continue to reach out to the communities even more so, and to begin to teach the truth, Lord God. Yeah. And that <laughs> if there's any there, Lord God, that that uh, don't know you, Father God, we speak it to be so that they will come to know you, Lord God. We're calling them all saved right now, in Jesus' name, in Baltimore. Okay. Hallelujah, Jesus. Fa Father, right now, first of all, I want to I explain... If we go off again, just stick, hang in there until we come back on because mm -hmm. we know what the problem is. Father, we just thank you right now that the angels are over to Baltimore and saturating that place with hope. We That's already so put right. Baltimore in a place called done. And Father, we thank you that those prayers that we have already been praying for the last few weeks is a done deal. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we lift up Chicago. Yes, hallelujah. And Father, right now, we thank you right now that Chicago is saved yes Lord. we thank you father that the what we've been praying for the city of chicago in the united states that the murder rate is going down that the gang activity is stopping they don't have the power that they think they have we thank you father that you are neutralizing yes. everything that they're doing hallelujah Jesus. drive-by shootings um shootings period uh that spirit of murder we we, we push it back right yes, now in, in the name, name of name in the name of jesus we thank you right now, Father. Yes, Lord. We thank you that Chicago is a city of hope. Yes. We thank you that Chicago is strong. And we thank you that the churches in Chicago are rising up to the occasion what they're supposed to be doing as far as speaking life over their neighborhood and speaking yes, protection over their loved ones. We thank you that that's happening right now in the city of Chicago right now. Thank in the you, name Lord. of Jesus. And thank Father, you, Lord. Father, we lift up Haiti. We thank you right now. We are still speaking life over this city. And we're still saying that Haiti is changing. We say that the angels are now saturating that city with grace and hope thank for the people. You, and the ones Lord that are Jesus. in office, we already spoke judgment on that situation. And those people are removed from office. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus we name. thank you. They're going to be removed supernaturally or just be moved. They're going to leave. But the right person will be in office to run that country the way it's supposed to be run. Yes. Lord. And the money that's going into that country mm -hmm. is going to the, meet the right people. And they will use it to disperse it throughout the country. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Anybody that's doing things with, with the finances wrongly, we command them to be removed. Right now. In the name of in Jesus. In Jesus' name. You take your hands off of what's meant for God's people 
right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We speak it be so you no longer have access to anything that's supposed to go to the people that are in desperate need. You take your hands off of it, devil, right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And Father, we lift up the country, Ukraine. Yes, Lord. Every time I see a crane, I see <clears throat> broken streets. I see all kinds of buildings that are destroyed and everything. So, Father, we thank you right now that your, your angels are, are already there on the scene, saturating and encouraging the people and, and releasing hope into the land of that country and causing change there. And any country that's coming against that country, we command it to stop right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. That you're not going to destroy that country. Those are God's people. And I thank you that the ones that are Christians are beginning to speak the word over that country and like they are doing and change is taking place. So in other words, we're adding our faith to what's already taking place in that country. Thank you. In Father. the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, that Ukraine will have a new order, Father yes. God. They will have a Christian foundation, Lord God. We speak it to be so that the Christians are rising up there, Lord, and that they have a word in due season for the people there, and they will be able to minister to them like never before in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And we speak it to be so that that country, that country's system uh, of democracy or whatever whatever system of government it is, Lord God, that the people will have freedom, Lord God, to worship and to know God. Freedom, Lord God, to, to pursue the things of God right now in Jesus' name without any kind of persecution, Lord God, right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. And Father, we, <clears throat> we, we lift up Detroit in yes, the name Lord. of Jesus. We already spoke what has to happen in that city. And Father, we, we expect those words that we've been speaking concerning Detroit will begin to manifest in the natural. Yes, so, Father, we thank you that the churches are changing in that city. Thank you, Father. We thank you that the, the, the real ministers are rising up to it and the anointing is backing them up to speak life over their neighborhoods, but also to speak life over their own church. Hallelujah. If it has to be a church member speaking life over well, I think that your anointing is going to help that church because we're, <laughs> to be honest, we are all in this together. Yes. So we have to lift one another up yes, with the do. love of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes Jesus. we have to speak correction, Come judgment on, and correction so things can change. That's right. So that's what we're doing. We're speaking judgment and correction over the places that we're praying for to Thank see change. God. In, thank you, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you right now that your hand is on Detroit. Yes, and whatever Lord. the devil wants to do in that city, he cannot do it. Yes, Lord. And he will not do it. And you're going to make the crooked places plain in Detroit, Father. Mm -hmm. You're going to make the crooked places plain. You're going to wipe out all the foolishness. And you're going to, to uh, set a standard there, Lord God, of righteousness in the churches, Father. Right now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. And Father, Hallelujah. And Father, we lift up Japan. I'm sorry if we're moving too fast here. We've been teaching a little longer than I thought. We uh, we lift up Japan, Father, and we we speak to under the, under the ground and the foundation of Japan that it will not cave in. Thank you. In God. the name of Jesus, we command the angels to begin to move and co make corrections and straighten the foundation up so that country can stay steady in the name of Jesus. No yes. more earthquakes in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We thank you that that country is protected yes. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Those people will not lose their lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. With, thank ahead. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. I th Lord, I thank you that even if they have to devise a method, Lord God, to scientifically be able to help uh, whatever may be happening uh, there, Lord God, that they will be able to successfully do that, Lord, that they will have enough care and concern for the people there, that they will develop plans and purposes in order to secure that lord and and that you will get the glory Amen. from it father right now in jesus name we call all the people in japan saved yes. <laughs> hallelujah jesus hallelujah and turned on for the lord hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah and father we lift up the young man elijah yes seven i think he's six six six, six, six. years old sorry 
We thank you, Father, that he is healed. Yes. And his brain matter is, everything is coming the way it's supposed to. He will not, when he come out of all of what he's going through, he will come out in his right mind. Yes, Lord. Because I heard when they, when they talk to him, he responds. So things are happening right now. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank that, you, Lord. That young man is covered in your grace and, yes. in, and in your prayers. Hallelujah. That he will live and not die. Yes, He Lord. will finish his course. Yes, And whatever Lord. the devil was planning to do, it has been averted, yes. stopped. Right push now, back right now in the name of in Jesus. Jesus name and we speak to that infection in his lungs yes. and we say you stop right now there's no more infection in his lungs right now in Jesus name they will be able to uh, cause that to stop right now it will no longer uh, get any worse it won't affect any other portions of of his body Right now, those germs are dying right now. That's caused that infection Amen. right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. From the trauma he sustained, Lord God, we speak it be so that his body is completely whole and restored from that, Lord. Right now in the name of Jesus, from the top of his head down to the bottoms of his feet, Lord. Yes. We just give you all the praise for his complete and total recovery right now in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Father, we think, I'm just going to mention a few people's names. Uh, they asked me to. Uh, we pray. We lift up Kathia and her husband in France, and we lift up uh, Larry Mack, great man of God, is a pastor. I think I'd go ahead. And, he's in. Is he in Michigan? Right. Yes. In Michigan, uh, I lift up. Ooh, so many people. <laughs> Lionel in Maryland. Lionel in Maryland. They're in New York. Ministers and fathers. Yes, Lord. And Nikolai and the situation that's going on in her country, uh, Malaysia. Father, we just thank you that we lift all these people up and we just speak blessings over them. And we speak protection over them. And we speak the things that they're believing God for that's in line with your word. We thank you that it's coming to pass right now. Yes, Lord. And, and I would like to lift up Dave Roberson. Yes, our pastor. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you're going to be everything to him that he needs you to be yes. right now, Father. We speak it to be so, Lord, that he has your peace. Yes. And, 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 Lord, he has everything that he needs, Father. Our church has everything that it needs, Lord God, right now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, and, Jesus. And this is something, each person that's listening to this right now, just begin to... Uh, Lift your church up right now. Call it out right now. And we just pray that finances will begin to manifest in, the, in your churches, a yes. church you know or whatever. Father, we lift up all the churches right now in the name of Jesus. And we come into agreement that the finances will increase in the churches. And I thank you right now. And bless each pastor. Yes, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Give them Thank that you, supernatural Father. strength. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus to do what they are called to do. Yes, hallelujah. And Father, I do sense in my heart that there are many places all over that the people have the finances. They may not even be born again, but they beginning to have a desire to help this person yes. and help that person because of it's the Lord giving them favor. Yes, so, Father, Lord. we thank you for favor on not only in our church, but all the churches that are on here right now, people that love their churches. Give them strength. Give them favor yes, in Lord. Jesus' name to help their churches. Father. Thank, thank you, you, Father. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And finally, I would like to say that, you know, we're calling uh, our president-elect, Donald Trump, saved. He's saved. We speak it to be so. He's saved. Now, how about that? And righteous decisions come out of the White House. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. That's Thank right. Thank you, Father. We have to lift him up. He is our president. He's not my president. I didn't vote for him. And I didn't do this. I didn't do it. But you know what? If you live in the United States, he's your man. <laughs> I know he's you don't like the it. Supreme Commander in Chief. And all this confusion. Sitting right next to the buttons. So the buttons, they so afraid he's going to press. No, it's not that bad. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, that was one of they, their uh, things, the little daggers they threw at him. You want this man in charge of those buttons, those nuclear weapons? Lord have mercy. We just have to continue to pray for our country because it is right now, it's, it's the devil is trying to cause so much confusion here so he can do what he always wanted to do. 
is try to destroy this nation from the inside. That's right. So we have to keep lifting up Donald Trump and his family. Yep. Lift up Hillary Clinton and her, her family. I'm not here to judge anybody because as far as I'm concerned, they both got dirt. <laughs> and but, but what we're doing is we're going to pray that God will move. Exactly. That's what Paul said. He said, I travail in birth again until Christ is formed. And we pray that he get born again. Now we're praying that he will grow up in the things of God. Yes. And God will be able to work through him. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just want to say, David, we, we pray for Elijah and we're going to continue to pray for Elijah. And he's getting better and better. Yes. Every day. Hallelujah. Praise God. And also just. Just lift me up because I know a little bug is trying to jump on me, which is not going to last. I'm healed. Just Amen. keep us, my family, lifted up during this time because the enemy is very upset. But that's okay. He's under our feet. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. That's all it's I'm not say. okay, but I'm just saying he's under our feet. You know? I know, I know. You know, we talked about, anyway, glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We need to go. No, okay. we're going to talk another hour. <laughs> Let me open your Bibles to well, Genesis. No, <laughs> Genesis. <laughs> All right, we love you guys. Praise God. Thank you for coming on. And, and um, I know it sounded like this right today, but it's going to get better. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, it kind of quit on us a couple of times, but uh, praise God, we didn't have to start completely over. So uh, praise the Lord. God Have bless. a wonderful night. God bless you. We love you. And we will see you tomorrow night at 715. Amen. God Amen. bless. Adios.